Remember Austria? It's that place where the Supreme Court agrees that you don't have the right to impose your burqa on the workplace and where they have to hold the elections again because the state was unable to convince the Supreme Court that the election was not purposefully rigged. Now, all very fine decisions, mind you, but it's also the place where the Supreme Court is not entirely convinced that a 10-year-old boy, now suffering from PTSD and who needed anal reconstruction surgery after being culturally enriched by an Iraqi diversity enforcer, the Supreme Court of Austria doesn't think that was actually rape. Let's explore. Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Alright, we've covered this story in the past, in past videos as it occurred, but this is a new development, a development which, quite frankly, I did not expect. And on this channel we actually do follow-ups on stories. So, coming from the Daily Mail, Iraqi refugee who raped a 10-year-old boy at a swimming pool in a sexual emergency has his conviction overturned because the Austrian court didn't prove he realized the boy was saying no. I mean, just the title is... what... what the... <sighs> anyway, let's read a bit. Quote, an Iraqi refugee who raped a 10-year-old boy at a swimming pool has had his conviction overturned because a court didn't prove he realized the boy was saying no. The rapist, identified as Amir Ay, 20, violently sexually assaulted the boy in the changing room of Theresienbad pool in Austria, claiming it was a sexual emergency because he had not had sex for four months. But an appeal court in the country accepted the defense lawyer's claim that the lower court had not done enough to prove he knew the schoolboy was saying no and overturned the conviction. The incident occurred in December 2015 as part of the integration process where he traveled with a 15-year-old helper and translator who was meant to be teaching him how to integrate into life in Vienna. He seized his moment at the pool and dragged the boy into the changing rooms and locked the door before raping him. The boy, known as Goran, required immediate medical treatment and has been suffering with post-traumatic stress disorder ever since. Brazen predator Amir A even went back to the swimming pool after the rape and was playing on the diving board when police came to arrest him. Confessing to the rape in an interview with officers, he said he knew what he did was wrong, but did it anyway because it was a sexual emergency having gone for four months without sex, according to the local. In the initial court hearing, he was found guilty of sexual assault and the rape of a minor and was sentenced to six years in jail. But the Supreme Court rescinded the sentence and ordered a retrial with the court's president, Thomas Philip, are calling the verdict watertight when it came to the sexual assault of a child, but that rape could not be sufficiently proved, says the local. The higher court said it should have been ascertained whether or not the victim agreed to the sexual act or whether Amir A had acted against the will of the boy. The second trial of the, uh, for the rape is expected to take place next year, but the attacker is likely to remain in custody until then. Oh, thank goodness it would have been the icing on the cake to release him now. I mean, considering how cold it is outside, maybe he'd have had another sexual emergency? Now, oh boy, considering this, now consider this, if a 19-year-old white Austrian man had had sex with, a, let's say, a white Serbian girl or Slovak, anyway, someone who doesn't speak German, and who was, let's say, 13 years and 11 months of age, now the age of consent in Austria is 14, by the way, and following that encounter, the girl needed reconstruction surgery and was still suffering from PTSD almost a year after the event. Now, what do you think? Would the, would the right honorable judges of the Supreme Court rush to rescind the sentence for the young white man because it wasn't clear enough to him that the girl had said 
No. I mean, serious question. Also, as you can imagine, the feminists are nowhere to be found on this actual case of actual rape arising from an actual rape culture. The argument of the judges is basically what usually emerges from people who've spent way too much time in the library and not enough time in the real world. I mean, it is a purely technocratic argument, which is not supposed to hold any weight in a civil law country. I mean, one of the main differences between a civil law society and a common law society is precisely this one, that there is an implicit acknowledgement that there is such thing as the spirit of the law. In other words, common sense is allowed to exist in a courtroom on both ends, both to acknowledge when a law is too strict to be applied in a particular case and when a law is not strict or clear enough for a particular case. In other words, what's been missing to these judges is basic common sense. I mean, how much of a technocrat one would have to be to look at the evidence, namely that the kid needed surgery and immediate medical assistance, and then to conclude that it, that it is somehow not clear that the victim had not consented to such thing? Because this verdict implies that there is a possibility, however so slight, that the 10-year-old might have been into homosexual BDSM and, following this logic, the only crime was the assault. Now, how twisted is that? Imagine, for instance, that Pope Ratzinger saying after the child rape scandals that there is not enough evidence that the choir boys actually did not consent to the sexual acts. The media would have gone crazy. Well, they did anyway, but they would have gone crazier. Because when it's Christians, it's an outrage. When it's the religion of special needs, it doesn't really matter to the media and the cucked judges do their jobs as diggers of more and more absurd excuses. In any event, if this case causes enough outrage, this could increase the chances of presidency to Mr. Hoffer. Now, for those of you who don't remember, Austria had a presidential elections, uh, election where the right-wing candidate lost at a fraction of 1%, just a few votes difference. And the vote itself was alleged to have been rigged. Now, the Supreme Court, the same Supreme Court, did not entirely agree that the allegations were true, but it did agree that there are too many unanswered questions and improperly answered questions about the process itself that it would risk lowering the public trust in the process to validate the elections. So, as a result, this December Austria will have another round of presidential elections. Now, if Mr. Hoffer's campaign, the right-wing candidate that is, plays this right, he can win. And I know it sounds cynical when I put it in these words, but you know the deal. Practical politics is not armchair philosophy. Hoffer should advocate deportation as a crime prevention method, starting from this case. He should advocate restricting the Austrian benefits system to citizens only, using as a post poster case the situation of the Afghan gang, which was dealing dope on the streets of Vienna, whilst cashing in thousands of euros from the taxpayers in all sorts of support for refugees. <clears throat> Now, none of these measures are extreme by any means and could easily be sold to the electorate, and they are much easier to promote if you can tell a story. You know, people like stories, and the unique advantage that Hofer has in this election is that he can tell absolutely true stories that can move the electorate, and he absolutely should do this, if he wants to win, of course. Because the far-left opponent's campaign will be using everything Im imaginable to demonize, obfuscate and divert attention away from the very real crisis and to whatever bollocks is fashionable this week. Oh, and next time there is a vacancy in the Supreme Court, which has 58 members in total. It's a very special way of dealing with this in Austria. Anyway, next time there is a vacancy, maybe a future President Hofer would make sure to appoint people who can recognize reality. I don't know, just a thought. 
And with that being said, thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. And um, I'll see you around on Freedom Alternative.